Hey everyone, it's Joe Lyons here from Automator, and I'm talking to um, Spanova. So I had reached out to him looking for some uh, other classes and things for the just as examples of, of amazing things you can do with Auto Hotkey with classes. And, uh, he had mentioned he actually has this new class he's, he's releasing that uh, it sounds really cool. Why don't you go ahead and give me a little overview of it? Yeah, basically, it takes the functionality of Auto Hotkey's default image search, pixel search, and kind of um, refreshes it a little bit, makes it a little bit faster gives it some some things that I think a lot of people would find useful. For instance, instead of just looping with image search to count all the images on screen, you can just call a function that says, you know, how many images are on screen, it'll tell you. Or you can get the locations of all the images on screen without having to do any extra work. And I think it'll be um, really useful for a lot of uh, newcomers or people just that are having a hard time understanding the, the default functions. Um, and it is, on average, about twice as fast. So that's, you know, a plus two, but. Now in your class, I'm gonna guess, you don't actually have to save uh, the file of the image you're searching for, is that right? You do, you do have to have a local file. Okay. Um, but what it does do though, is uh, it does cache it into memory. So the first call will be a little bit slower, but every call after that will, will write from RAM. So it's, it's much faster. It's one of the things I liked about the find text function was it, it converts it into, you know, a text value that basically then you don't have to have the files. But um, anyway, yeah, that's awesome. Because I, I also know that it's not as fast be because also of, of that kind of thing. But Yeah, the the only thing like with uh, with pixel searches, obviously you don't need it. But for with an uh, image file, I mean, you have to have some way to know what it is. But um, I, I found that to keep a similar functionality to the default one, I didn't want to change too much. So you specify file just like normal one, you know, yeah, you got your variants, pixel variants and whatnot. Um, if, okay, okay, I can, so I can share screens if you're ready. Yeah, let's go for it. Okay. Uh, I'll do a drum roll, hold on. <laughs> okay. There we go. Uh, does, can you see this? Does this look good? Yeah, it's loading up, yeah. Okay, so I'll go over, uh, let me zoom in a little bit here. So here's the class. And um, these are the functions. Uh, you have image, region, uh, image count, count region, image array that returns the array of all locations, pixel, pixel region, pixel count, count region. So pretty much everything you would need for scanning. Um, I do have comments for all of them, so it should be relatively easy to understand what they're doing. It's literally as easy as just initiating a new instance of the class and then calling you know, scan image, uh, which this one returns the X and Y position. Um, I'm actually running it right now for my game. This is the, the program I'm running. And what it does is uh, it searches for an image. In this case, it's these swords down here to, to figure out where the inventory is at. It specifies the width and height of the inventory. And then uh, I set a timer that scans. And if it doesn't find this steel bar image, it lets me know. And it's, you know, it's that easy to get it going. Is there anything you, you want to ask? Well, I, I'm curious. So I get the fact that you're finding the location, you know, the images, images, you know, one or more, and then the locations yeah. of them. Do you have anything built in of like, once I find that location, I can click there or do anything like that? Or is this just image search? It's just image searching. I do have, um, a lot of this came off an old library I was using, which doesn't have like, it's, I had to cut some of it out because it would, be maybe a little bit too difficult for people, but it does in incorporate uh, clicking and whatnot. But it's, I don't know if I wanted to add too much to it to, to confuse people, you know? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wasn't trying to imply that it should have it. I was just curious because I know for the fine text function, which, which I had used for a long time, it was cool. However, for people who don't program it on a hotkey, you're like, hey, I found it. Now I want to click it or send text yeah. to it. That was, so we built Automate My Tax to kind of combine those two things. But um, anyway, it gets back to in a class, I think you should keep it the relevant stuff for what you're doing, you know, and just have the other things that you would, you know, ex maybe extend your class and do stuff with it or something, but cool. Yeah, it's another thing is um, I'm definitely open to ideas. If anybody has suggestions, I can add it. Um, most of the the uh, the scanning is done with machine code. It's, it's C++ that's been compiled because, I mean, that's really the only way to get that speed of auto hockey. Just do the nature of how it works, but yeah, if there, I mean, it's relatively easy to add. I think I can, um, I can open up one of those source files. Uh, it's a bit of a mess here, but oh, no, it's over here. So this is the um, scan image file, 
And uh, one of the reasons I didn't in include this stuff is because I didn't want to confuse, you know, auto hockey newbies who have no idea what any of this is. Right. But um, it's, you know, it's not too hard for me. So if there's anything anybody would need to add specifically, I'm totally down for that. And, and um, when we were chatting before, I, I believe you said the image could actually be in the background. Is that right? Yeah, that is correct. Yeah. As long as the window's not minimized, it can be found. I do put some error checking in there, though. So if you if you mess something up, it should let you know so that you can fix it. But as long as it's open in the background, it can find it. So I'm curious, not, not to get into the weeds on it, but how are you actually doing that? Because I thought if the image, you know, wasn't visible, auto hockey wouldn't actually even see it. Are you just telling it to... Yeah, well, the what? way it the way that it works is uh, it actually grabs a handle to the window, um, and then it grabs its device context, and that allows it to um, grab the bits directly from the oh, window. Oh, cool. Neat. That's um, awesome. However, if you do not specify a title, like if I went here and I got rid of this, and it was like oh. that, it would default to the desktop, and that would be the okay. same functionality as Auto Hockey's normal one. I get it. Uh, but cool. with, with my functions, though, so it's still a bit faster. Uh-huh. Very cool. Now, how does one go about, like, let's say, I know earlier you mentioned it finds those two swords, right? Yeah. How how do you go about saying, let's say I wanted to find that blue, tri not diamond shape in the middle. Like, okay, let's okay. say I decided I want a new image I want to go look for. How are you, you know, designating that? So what I usually do, um, if you're going to, if, if you're gonna do it i would use uh, an image editing software like you could use paint although i highly advise getting gimp gimp is yeah. like it's free it's, it's, it's basically photoshop but it's free it's, it's amazing crazy. yeah yeah um and then all you do is you hold alt print screen and it'll take a picture of the window instead of your entire screen and then control v and gimp and then you can go in and you know find an image press control c to copy control shift v and then there you go you got your image nice. um i i do actually have my own program for this that i wrote which does a similar thing um, right here. Oh, I think um, the keybind is being stolen by something else. But uh, it, it does a similar thing. And uh, we, uh, I think we were in a live call a couple of weeks ago where Hellbent was showing he has one that you can basically make an icon out of anything, you know, on the fly. And it, it's probably similar to what you're doing. Of like you can just isolate an area, hit a button, and very quickly save it as you know, a file. And it, yeah, that's awesome. This is, I guess this would be similar. This is my, um, my image editing one, but this is kind of similar. You select an area, you press a hotkey and then it saves image to a PNG or, or anything else, but by default it's PNG. Oops. Didn't know I was still running, but, uh, this is how I usually do it. So, um, here's, the, here's a, a use case anyway. So, what I'm doing in game right now, a lot of times I forget what I'm doing and I'll, I'll start something and then I'll, I'll tab out and I'll be sitting here doing nothing. So I'll show you how I would, I would do this. So I'd, I'd go in here and I would grab this, this image, something that's unique and, and is not going to be, um, right. Not going to be found somewhere else. And then, um, oh, wrong one. Uh, my desk is a horrible mess. <laughs> uh, and then I can close that. So now I have in my uh, folder here. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I have the, the file here in my folder. If I open it in paint, that's it right there. And then uh, I just go to my, uh, my program here. And then I can do like um, scan image. So scans for a single image. And then uh, I, okay. <laughs> If I reload this, I've got like 50 million things running right now. I, I completely forgot about all that. Yeah, but um, uh, where is it at? Here it is. Okay. So then you get a one because it exists on the screen. If it doesn't exist on the screen and I reload it, you get a zero. So it's, you know, it's, it's pretty much that easy. Create a file, run the scan, and then there you go. Do you, uh, how could you? Let's say that wasn't, you You think it's unique, right? You mentioned you get the picture of the thing. Is there a way to get a count? Does it tell you how many it found? Yeah, so you can do a scan image count. And then um, if I rerun it again, I get one. Only one image is found. So 
Uh, but to show that it's working, I'll type in um, steel bar, which is what would be in my inventory, and it should return 28 okay. of those. Actually, 27, sorry. So there's another way to do it. And um, like I said, try to make it really easy so you didn't have to, you don't have to worry about, you know, do I got to fill this in, do that and that. You just literally type in the name of what you want to do and you go for it. Nice. On on the 27, now do you have each of those as some sort of an index with the location of them or, or something? That or? would be um, image uh, array. Awesome. Um, and then if I specified that, this one you do need to have an array to store it into. So then I can do... Um, I guess I could do it like this. So a dot length, then uh, and then uh, a uh, index. Oh my! I don't even know what happened there. So now, if I rerun it, so the first one's at this position, so on and so forth. It's awesome. And then from there, you know, you can. You can write your own function that loops through all of them, finds one closest to a point, or find certain ones and you know that are on this side or that side, or you know, there's a lot you can do with it. Nice. And then I know you mentioned this is faster than the built-in stuff. Have, have you done actual benchmarks? Do you know how much? Yes, faster? I do actually. So here's um, some scans. This is a sample size of 500 calls to each of them. With the default image search using the fast RBG settings with no pixel variance, which makes a big difference. It's about 55 milliseconds per search. Uh, it's about 140 with variance. This is my machine, by the way. This could be completely different for you. Sure, right. Um, right. And then my my function is 36 with no variance and about 76 with variance. So it's not like um, magnitude's faster, but right. it is going to be faster, and it gives you a little bit more to work with. Cool. And then um, most of the other stuff is in the range of like, oh, this is also worst case scenario, by the way. This is um, a, a 2K resolution monitor with the result being in the very bottom right corner. So, oh, wow. Yeah. This, okay. is, a, this is like a stress test, but All right. usually your results will be a lot faster than this. Nice. Yeah, awesome. And not that I expect this to be here, but you're using version one of AutoHotKey, correct? Uh, is AutoHotKey L version one now? I'm, I'm not. L Up to date with the terminology. Yeah, yeah, no worries, yeah. Okay, then yeah, then that's the one I'm using. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So version two, the beta has been released finally, where it's kind of more, um, it's not moving around, it's not so fluid, and uh, and there's some really cool advantages with it. Um, if, if I have like a, I think it's like a two hour long video, honestly, of an intro of what you should know if you're switching, but some of the stuff is pretty awesome. That when when you're a programmer and you're doing stuff where I would say you know you might really enjoy it, right? Some of the things. If noobs, yeah. I, I would still recommend they stick with L, right? But um, anyone who has any sort of, a, they're working with classes, I think you could look at V2 and go, wow. And especially like that video with Maestrieth. Well, actually, there's one with Dimitri um, Gertz who's been programming in it for quite a while. And then Maestrieth hadn't programmed in it. And so there's two different videos where one, Isaias, who's been programming in it, you know, works with me. He's talking through with Dimitri the benefits of it and that. That was a fun, interesting video. And then there was a second video where we just happened to be on a call with Maestrieth, and Isaias was telling him, "Hey, here's some of the stuff you can do in version two because Maestrieth is a you know a very advanced programmer." And he was totally going, "Oh, wow, that's so good that they've added you know these fun." To me, it was all you know over my head. But anyway, it's it's something you might want to check out. But. I did look at it briefly, and uh, some of it did look a lot more convenient, especially, like, instead of having to specify, like, Varsec capacity all the time, it was something a lot easier, like, new object or something like that. I can't remember, but my, my problem is I have um, a lot of files that are, like, thousands of lines long, and I'd love to convert them, right. but it's just, it's a lot of work, so. Yeah, well, the good thing is, though, you can still have both installed, right, and just tell your your other ones to launch with v1 and then use this new stuff on the other ones but yeah i i get you it's it and i know isaiah when he's switching back and forth because the syntax is you know fairly different on stuff it is yeah it, it can be confusing of which one you know my programming and i mean when i was learning python at the same time i would i would start writing python in my auto hotkey code and i'm like oh crap you know i'm like <laughs> i'm in the wrong language i have that problem with um what do you call it? The uh, the comments on auto hockey. You, you use them everywhere in C plus oh. plus. Yeah. Wait. What do you call those things? I can't remember. Yeah, comments. Oh, semicolon. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
And then I, I put those in auto hockey, and then it throws errors all over the place. Because if you put them right directly after something, it doesn't work. So. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, I know for a uh, SQL, you're supposed to uh, – SQL ends the JavaScript, too, I think. You end your statement, your line, with the semicolon. And, and it's really hard for me to do that because I'm kind of trained not to do that. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, most languages do that. So auto hockey is a bit different. And which – it's kind of unfortunate because there's a lot of syntax I'd love to use. And I don't know if auto hockey version two does it, but there's a lot where I'd like to have like an if statement and then have the result on the same line, but in auto oh, hockey so, that wouldn't work. Yeah. You can do, I think they're called fat arrows um, in V2 and do if statements, you know, do a function in one line. Um, it, it's got oh, some okay. stuff. Yeah. Th this is the stuff that like, like the matrix was like, Oh, you can do that now. Like that's, those are awesome. That yeah. would be awesome, yeah. I, I hate having to do, like, um, multiple lines for something that I, I could easily do in one line in a different language. So. The, the other thing that, and I haven't released it yet, but we did a video on it, is, well, in a, if you're up for it, maybe in 20 minutes when Isaiah usually starts around um, nine your time, uh, I'll, I'll, let's see if he, we can ask him real quickly and see if he has any thoughts on it. Cause, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. And, and if not, uh, so in my email to you, I had, like, 40 people that, are you know more, you know the same level as me or more advanced than me that that I reached out to and someone someone will, this is where it's great having a community of people where you can you know go to and ask questions to um it, it I keep trying to tell people who's your who's your auto hockey buddy right you need at least one you know two people that you can talk to and when you get stuck because Isaiah he's he's light years ahead of me right but he'll get stuck on something. And he's like, hey, can you join Zoom? And so we'll start talking through it. And just from either talking to me or I'll say, well, what about this? And, and just because I don't have the same assumptions in my head that he does, often it's it's a great, easy way to, you know, it stimulates the thought, right? And this is why I always yeah, tell yeah. people, find someone else to work with, even if they're not coders, but just talk to them. And it's the rubber ducky approach, too, if you, you've heard that, right, is is have a thing that you look at and you talk, explain it to the thing sitting in front of you. Like I'll explain it to my dental floss. Great. Um, you start telling it. And when you're saying it, your brain works differently. And often you go, I'm, I'm an idiot. You know, like, of course that won't work because I was, you know, doing this. Yeah. I don't have any uh, auto hockey buddies. So I use that approach a lot. I'll just say it out or, you know, just think about it. Hey man, I'm right here. No, it's seriously though. If you get, you know, when you get stuck on something, feel free to reach out and, um, it, it just it. What I always tell people is, yes. It, this is the other thing is I always tell people, don't don't reach out to me that first second, right? Spend spend forty minutes on it. Roughly is my kind of rule of thumb, and then but don't spend four hours on it, right? You can spend forty minutes on it, or or take a break. That's really the other thing I encourage people is take a break, even take a nap. You know, often when I take a nap and I wake up and I'm like, oh, I know the answer. But yeah, beating your head against the wall over and over and over sometimes isn't the most efficient way to find a solution. Yeah, I definitely second the uh, sleep in or take a nap. I usually do that. I'll end the night on something hard. I'll wake up in the morning and it's like, of course, it was so, it was easy. It was right there. It's amazing how many times that's happened for me is, and, and the real key is, you know, is work on something, get stuck on it. Before you go to, you know, take a nap, think over, you know, like two or three times in your head, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? And off, like I said, often you wake up with like, Oh, you know, I, and maybe it's not the perfect solution, but it's at least an approach. I didn't think about if you're up for it, maybe in 20 minutes when Isaiah usually starts around um, nine year time. Uh, I'll, I'll, let's see if he, we can ask him real quickly and see if he has any thoughts on it. Cause yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if not, uh, so in my email to you, I had like 40 people that are, you know, more, you know, same level as me or more advanced than me that, that I reached out to. And someone, someone will, this is where it's great having a community of people where you can, you know, go to and ask questions to. Um, it, it, I keep trying to tell people, who's your, who's your auto hockey buddy, right? You need at least one, you know, two people that you can talk to. And when you get stuck, because Isaiah, he's, he's light years ahead of me, right? But he'll get stuck on something. And he's like, hey, can you join Zoom? And so we'll start talking through it. And just from either talking to me or I'll say, well, what about this? And, and just because I don't have the same assumptions in my head that he does, often it's, it's a great, easy way to, you know, it stimulates the thought, right? And this is why I always yeah, tell people, yeah. 
find someone else to work with, even if they're not coders, but just talk to them. And it's the rubber ducky approach too. If you, you've heard that, right. Is, is have a thing that you look at and you talk, explain it to the thing sitting in front of you. Like I'll explain it to my dental floss. Great. Um, you start telling it. And when you're saying it, your brain works differently. And often you go, I'm, I'm an idiot. You know, like, of course that won't work because I was, you know, doing this. Yeah. I don't have any uh, auto hockey buddies. So I use that approach a lot. I'll just say it out or, you know, just think about it. Hey man, I'm right here. It's seriously though, if you get, you know, when you get stuck on something, feel free to reach out and, um, it, it just, it's what I always tell people is, yes, it, this is the other thing is I always tell people, don't, don't reach out to me that first second, right? Spend, spend 40 minutes on it. Roughly is my kind of rule of thumb. And then, but don't spend four hours on it, right? You can spend 40 minutes on it or, or take a break. That's really the other thing I encourage people is take a break, even take a nap. You know, often when I take a nap and I wake up and I'm like, oh, I know the answer. But yeah, beating your head against the wall over and over and over sometimes isn't the most efficient way to find a solution. Yeah, I definitely second the uh, sleep in or take a nap. I usually do that. I'll end the night on something hard. I'll wake up in the morning and it's like, of course, it was so it was easy. It was right there. It's amazing how many times that's happened for me is and and the real key is, you know, is work on something, get stuck on it before you go to you know take a nap. Think over, you know, like two or three times in your head. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? And off, like I said, often you wake up with like, oh, you know, I, and maybe it's not the perfect solution, but it's at least an approach. I didn't think about this, you know, or I didn't think about that. And, and it leads to that solution. Absolutely. Awesome, man. It was great talking to you. Yeah, you too, of course. Right. See ya.